I'm so glad we live in a world where Steam offline mode exists because my internet is really struggling today. That said, let's talk about Banner Saga. So I think it might be worth talking a little about where we are in the story because it's easy to get lost. Not a ton has happened, but there's been a lot of scenes and a lot of character moments, and it's easy to lose a sense of where we are. So let's just pause for a sec and sort of recount what's going on. In general, what we know about the world is there are humans in the south, Varl in the north, and Dredge in the north above that. There were wars with the Dredge, though mostly it seems they have been pushed back up north and haven't been sighted to the south of some kind of barrier for a while. But there are still living Varl who fully remember those wars in that combat, like Ivor and Hakan and some others. In our specific parties, our human-based party has Rook, Alet, Ivor, and some others. Ivor being a Varl, the others, the main characters being humans. And they are fleeing. The Dredge have come much farther south than they've come before. We don't know how they got there. And they are fleeing, and they have found their way to Frostveller, which is a walled city, which seems like a good place to defend. But they made it inside and found there are chaotic factions within it and it is not clear how defensible it will be if it is internally filled with combat. On the other side, we have the Varl, and we started off as a tax collector, then the Prince of the Varl uh, started traveling with us along with the Prince of the Humans because the Varl and the Humans were making some kind of diplomatic treaty. The Prince of the Varl died, possibly in a way that implicates the Prince of the Humans as having caused it, but we are, we're still headed to the Varl capital to try to strike some kind of diplomatic deal between the two species. However, we received reports that the, the, uh, the dredge were not coming from where we thought they were, had, must have broken through, the fort we thought they must have made it through, but they are coming from a different location, and we are now moving to there to try to see what's causing the dredge to come there. It's an abandoned bay city, are they coming from the water? What's happened to this abandoned city? We don't know. And I think that basically sums up where we are in the story. We are currently with the Varl party. We are in chapter three, which is the very much gameplay war chapter, and we are making it to our second godstone. Hopefully we get a nice item from it, because godstones tend, if you uh, interact with them, to give you items. We have been doing really well in all the wars so far. I am pleased with my gameplay decisions. Our best character has been Mogger, very good defensive unit, and we've just gained Fasult, another great defensive Varl. So the party is really filling out nicely for me. We also got an equip for Mogger, the one equip I'm really pleased with, that draws more aggro to him, so he can just have be a huge wall and the enemy will waste all their turns on him. Mogger has still never died in a fight. Now here, he's never got knocked out. The caravan stops, Godstone looming overhead for a short rest. The warriors are glad for it, and the stone gives you an ancient sense of being watched over in a comforting way. Didn't help the bodies underneath it, though. The earth at the base of the Godstone is scarred, like a struggle occurred. Merchants, no dredge. Encircling Dengler are a variety of goods. A barrel of mead who knows how old, loose silver. A statue made of soapstone, offerings to a dead god. Leave the dead and their offerings alone. Leave the offerings, but check for the merchant's brother, or gather whatever you can. We're going to check for the merchant's brother. We were told to do that, and I think we should follow the advice we receive. In the midst of the pile of bodies, a glitter catches your eye. You fish a gold necklace out from a jerkin to find five golden rings strung on it. The merchant's brother. Guess he didn't make it, you mutter. What are the odds we see the merchant again? I think we should certainly take it. Um, we can take it with intent to return it. I don't remember if this is some great item. I'm not sure if we get to keep it this way. You toss the necklace to Mogger and tell him to hang on to it. If anyone can be trusted, it's him. Plus ten renown. I don't think we got the item this way. But I think we get renown this way. Not sure what the item does, so don't know if that was a good decision. Don't know what made them think the godstone would be safe, Mogger grunts. We're completely exposed up here, he says. If we're going to rest, I think we ought to do it a little further away. Let's examine the godstone. Dengler was always one of the favorites amongst men, god of good fortune, 
They believed he brought luck, wealth, or whatever else you wish you had, but couldn't get on your own. The word fortune has a lot of meanings. Eventually, you move on. This is our second godstone. There will be many godstone we, uh, we pass through on our, our journey. They're not... They don't feel, like, specifically important. Like, I don't find any of them memorable or anything. But they're a nice touch to the world we're inhabiting. 42 days of supplies. Not worried about that. Morale is still great. No need to rest. We have 59 renown. I could spend that, but I think we already, uh, at the end of last episode, spent all we particularly wanted to. In the distance, you see smoke rising from the trees. Dredge aren't known for setting fires, says Mogger, but it does get their attention. We'd use fires like that to lead them along in the Great Wars. Yeah, if the dredge just keep coming, one of the most important strategies is clearly going to be set them to keep coming at something else. And if fires do that, fires are one of the most valuable things you've got as a tool against them. Yeah, but they wised up to that after a while, interjects another warrior. Or it could be someone trying to get our attention, claims Fasolt. The other group from Schlid were sent this way. No matter how you look at it, investing will cost time. We're going to check it out ourselves. I think, in general, just in this game, I really like to do things myself. You tend to, if there's a reward, get the reward and also get extra battles, and that's just good for collecting renown. The sounds of fighting ahead compel you to crash through the foliage, sidestepping Varl and Dredge bodies along the way, and I like fighting. You burst onto a scene of carnage, a vast number of Varl surrounded by Dredge. Explanations can wait. You charge into the fight. And also, this is not a party where, like, losing time feels like a big cost. This is our party that has a whole bunch of supplies. Our other party is the one with the problem. So we still have some injuries. But they're not the end of the world. And we have the party we want to use. And we have Hakan and, uh, Mogger and Fasolt with combined 37 armor shield stat. What a, what a good pair. Gris's 12-12 is pretty solid. Hakan's 12-17 can... Even with two days injury, a 12-15 is doing damage. Ludin doesn't really need his strength to do damage. His impale move's pretty useful. As we've seen, Irsa has slag and burn, which is a nice way to do strength damage whether or not you've weakened their armor and can do area of effect damage, which is very nice to have in your party. And especially with so many enemies being like 8-10 or 10-8-ish stats, 8-9, 8-8, just dropping them to 6 can be such a nice thing. All right. How do we want to handle this? Well, if we can stay away from these three, 1911, that'll need to be broken. But that's not really threatening to Mogger. So I think we'll have Mogger move towards them. And then... Khan, if he gets a turn here, can do real damage. I think I'll line up like this. And I'm going to start, let's check how far they can move. So they can't quite reach me. So actually I'll just have Mogger stay still because I can't reach them either. Now this guy can probably reach someone, but Fasolt has good armor. It's nice. Or sorry, Mogger does. And now Fasolt can move forward, weaken his armor, and then Hakan can easily finish him off. Actually, well... With 15, uh, yeah, we will just go for strength here. Oh, I shouldn't have plussed, because I should be trying to get them down to 1. Now, because this guy can't move through his ally, if I go here... Oh, I should have moved one square less, but I wanted to slag and burn this square to do 2 damage to both. And that skips past this guy's 19 armor, the big ones. Alright, Fasolt will take a little armor damage here. This seems like a pretty easy fight. I love the units that automatically do armor damage back. We'll just impale over here. Uh, we don't have a unit... Oh, we do have a unit that has the pushback that can set off impale, right? That's a cool combo, is if you look at Gris, his move is um, Battering Ram, which knocks an enemy back. And if you do that to someone that's been impaled, that's going to do bonus damage. I'm going to go... Where, how far can this guy move? So if I just go here, that guy can't reach me, and... Oh, I was meant to uh, hit this guy. Oops. Um, 
you have 19 armor, so I can't really skip your armor. But I'm still going to use Sundering Impact and do, I think, one damage to each. Or two damage to Strength. Nice. Gris can't really reach the combat. I uh, let... Mm, probably should have played it a little safer with your stuff, but... Yeah, they're just going for Mogger. That's fine. And Mogger can come over here and do real shield damage and hopefully draw fire away from units. Actually, we're going to bring the pain, so if we do draw fire, we'll do extra shield damage to anyone that attacks us. Uh, we didn't draw this one away, though. That's a shame. Sorry, I had to pause for a sec. Uh, where are we at? Uh, the 10 is a bigger threat. We only have 10 power, so we'll hit this guy, and we can hit him down to 3. And I think we impaled this one, so hopefully it moves a little. That's uh, still at 9. Okay, not the end of the world. Luden's strength doesn't matter too much. And honestly, neither does Irsus. If we could slag and burn and hit 2, that would be nice. We'd have to move forward to do it. Who gets next turn? Big guy. Big guy can't get through this gap. So actually, I will move forward with Irsa, and we will slag and burn here. Get two damage on each. And now everything froze up for a sec. Mogger draws more attacks. Let's get some return the favor. Hmm. I'm going to impale this guy again, I think. Now actually, actually, let's try to be clever about this. If I impale this guy and then push him back with Gris, he's going to take extra damage. But if I go to this square, I push him to somewhere. Can Battering Ram push you through? Can knock you through? I think it can knock him through me. So if I push him this way and then push him back the other way, I think this will do funny damage. And we do get uh, Gris's turn before him, so that's nice. Uh, but I might have let Ursa die here. Okay, that was terrible. But if we pretend that never happened, this guy's down to five, so not a big problem. They can't really reach anyone else. So let's bring them down to one. Seems worth doing. Shame about Ursa. Not, not a perfect fight by any means. But I think we brought everyone pretty low. And I think I can do a funny move here. Now I could just push him um, this way. But I think if you push through units, you do extra effect. Yeah. So because we've impaled this one, I do the shield damage. And for all the squares it pushes through, it takes one extra damage. So we ended up actually killing it on the impale. So I think that's a, a fun strategy to employ. Now, you're 10-9. Yeah, Mogger's still full because Mogger's great. So I can just hit for strength damage here and get this guy to be not so big a threat. What a superstar. Mogger always brings full strength. Uh, is Luden in trouble? Luden's in a bit of trouble. Okay, clearly this one's the problem. But we can't really hit it hard. Let's give Fissile to kill. It's hard for me to get, actually, at the 9-9 uh, the nine -nine unit, so I might... Yeah, we gotta... Let's impale it. Maybe we can again pull off the Gris combo with Impale. Alright, everyone just wants to attack Mogger. This one's not getting another turn for a while, anyway. Let's finish it off. Or I guess it gets a turn soon, but oh well. That gets a con up to level 5. That's nice. This took a bunch of impale damage, which is just enough to save Luden. And I guess Luden will fall here as we go into pillage mode, unless it gets drawn to Mogger, which it might. Nah, Luden fell. Oh, no, nice. Luden made it. All right, we don't want to be feeding Mogger kills, but I do want to feed Fasult kills. Not a kill. Well, we can lower them to three. And I guess we'll get Gris the kill? That's okay. Could be worse. Don't need to be too careful about it. 
don't want Luden to go down. That would increase his injuries to lower his stats for next fight. Shame about Irsa. You know, I, I, I let her go a little far forward unsafely. She can't take more than one hit usually. But I think a, a solid fight. Yeah, Irsa injured. We could always just rest for three days anytime we're too worried, but uh, we're looking pretty comfortable right now, I think, in combat. I really like the combat. I think it's um, not the most complex system, but kind of every part of it plays strategically. Uh, we're down to only a uh, good morale, so I might rest a day. As the fighting wraps up, one of the Varl puts his axe away and puffs on a pipe. Hakan, he greets you. Glad you saw our signal. He explains that they had come from Schlid and were surrounded. He spotted you in the distance and lit a fire to draw your attention, at the risk of drawing the dredge as well. Back at the caravan, their sizable detachment joined your ranks. That's actually going to lower our... S oh, they brought supplies. Good. Okay. It's going to say. But we're down to 35 days of supplies, so we're not looking quite as, uh, as full up as I would like. But I still feel comfortable resting. I don't... I guess it's up to great. And if we look at our heroes, they should have fewer days till recovery. But we're basically getting a battle or two a day. So it is tricky to find time to fully recover. Might have helped if one of us wasn't, if uh, I hadn't been a buffoon and gotten Gunalf killed, but we can max out Hakan's level. Now, we definitely want to get to 18 strength. The question is where do we want to put the other point? On average, I think break is really good. And so is exertion, and will is a little worse, but if you have low will, it's hard to do a ton with your exertion. But Hakan is so powerful, normally I'd just easily give the point to break here, because breaking armor is great, but Hakan is kind of our heavy hitter after. So I think I'd like to give him the exert point. That gives him a little more maneuverability on the field if needed, because he can spend three exert on movement. It also gives him a little bit more ability to make sure he does significant damage by pumping up his attack with his high strength. And we've maxed out Hakan's level. I think I feel good about the stat distribution there. Vasult can't level up again, but, you know, his 19 is great. I'd love to get him up to 13 power. It's a shame he has no break. Like, he kind of runs around being strong and not actually doing anything, because his backup stats are pretty poor, but the 19 is pretty huge. This is why Mogger is so great. Like, I prefer Vasult's 19-13 stat distribution to Mogger's 18-12, um, obviously it's higher, but even if, like, 1911 versus 1812, I would in general prefer. But Mogger has this huge break stat that clearly makes him the, uh, the best member of this team. And I don't love Fasol. He needs, he needs another move. In the, in the second game, characters unlock a second move slot. A second special move. And so a lot of characters that kind of, like, have nice stats but are stuck with a crummy ability can find a way to be more valuable. We have an army of over a thousand Varl. Mogger comes to you privately. I've seen some of the warriors disappearing, he says. At first, thought it was my imagination. Now I'm certain several have gone missing. Mostly men, but some Varl too. Can't quite figure it. If it's abandonment, you can't let it stand. Let's have Mogger question the ones who have returned. Yeah. I couldn't get a straight answer out of them, he says on return, and others d denied it outright. I can't question the humans directly, but I'll be damned if Luden doesn't have something to do with this. All right, let's speak with Luden. I ordered it, says Luden when you confront him. I sent my men to bring back gold from the cart you left behind. If you have a problem with your warriors joining them, maybe you should keep them under control. <laughs> oh... Pummel him and his dude. Uh, all of this seems so effect ineffective. Like, threaten him, he'll just go, whatever. Demand he turn over the loot. I, I don't care about the loot, I don't think. Insist he explain his actions. I mean, he already did. Pummel him in his stupid face. Is this worth pummeling him in his stupid face? I don't know. You know, honestly, I think the thing he'd respect most is turn over the loot. No, he says unflinchingly. Yeah, I really don't care about this. Yeah. Anyways, to read the line, no, he says unflinchingly. Mogger pulls you aside. 
He has no claim to the gold, but he takes no orders from us either. Like it or not, he's an equal. They'll repay us when this is over, and you'll look the better for it. Luden folds his arms. We'll back down. You leave no doubt in Luden's mind that another stunt like this won't end peacefully. He shrugs indifferently. Eh. Every time an event happens, it's like exactly after our morale has declined, so I always worry that we're going to get in a fight and not get the full boost to uh, Will. Your warriors demand a break. You halt the caravan with a sigh, but in all honesty, you're starting to feel the altitude and weariness yourself. Mogger leans on a fallen tree, fiddling with a crust of bread. Getting colder, he says, staring into the distance. You can see Ridgehorn just start to peek around the mountains. A flock of ravens float across a clear sky toward the fort. We should follow those birds. Well, we're going to Ridgehorn, right? That's the plan, isn't it? Without another word, Mogger starts running towards the birds and tumbles over the cliff. Suddenly, he's gliding through the air, flapping his arms for all they're worth. He swoops towards Ridgehorn before bursting into flames and plummeting into the tower, which crumbles like a log from a smoldering campfire. If I just got Mogger killed, I'm going to be so upset. You think you've lost your mind, then you wake up- oh, phew. You don't remember setting up camp or falling asleep in front of crackling logs. What's going on, you mutter. Mogger approaches you at the campfire. Hakan, did you see he starts? Yeah. You both agree to keep it to yourselves. That's pretty ominous about the tower. Alright, let's rest for a day. Seems like what the game wants from me, and let's go. Only 32 days of supplies. We were doing- we were so strong on this front, it seemed like our caravan might never get low. But also, 30 days of supplies is so much, like, even if we pick up more people, the game just isn't that many days. Obviously, in real life, if you had a month of supplies for something like this, that'd be kind of scary. I'm sure you've seen them, Mogger says, but we're being followed. Dredge have been on our asses since we left the Godstone. Lots of them. I'm sure there's plenty in front of us, too, but we're just half a day out from thick woods. We might lose them there. Good, more slags to kill. Uh, but maybe... Maybe we get ready for a fight. Maybe we should fight them separately. Yeah, I think. Okay, says Mogger. Already the warriors. Careful, Hakan. This isn't the time to start taking risks. Uh, this is our fifth war of the chapter. There are 1122. There are... We have more than that. Yep, they're going to look nervous. And we're going to charge once again. And uh, hopefully this time I get a nice item for it. If we can do the two two legs of the battle. Our fifth war. Man, this chapter is really, like, it has it, it's, it has some plot, some plots coming. Oh, we're all full healed. That's wonderful. But it is very much the, uh, the war chapter, as I, I keep saying. But we're going to keep having that for a bit. Luckily, I still think the battles are great. And I'm just enthused to be doing them. Uh, other games in the series will have more variety of enemy types and things like that. Here we've sort of seen a few humans, but not for a while. The little dredge, the big dredge, they basically work the same way. And occasionally the stone slingers. All right, 1218, that is scary. 1911. 910, 1911. All right, so we've really got to weaken this guy first. It's our turn order. Assault goes second. Hmm gotta keep like any unit that could take damage away from that maybe i want to start down here but i can't put everyone over there oh yes i can let's put Fasult. Mm, let's put mauger out in the middle Fasult make a bit of a wall and then the humans in the back where hopefully nothing can get at them immediately can't reach anything. That might mean nothing can reach me. So if I just stay still, only one thing can reach me. If I move one over, things can still reach me. Maybe if I go exactly here, this square, nothing can reach me. 
that can't, that can't, that can't. That is going to reach something of mine anyway. All right, we're going to drop here. All right, bit mauger, please. There you go. Now, Fasolt has 19 armor, so even the 18, not that scary. I don't want to be hit by both of these, so I'm just going to move forward a little. And this also doesn't block another Varl reaching this unit. Yeah, let's hit for two. Not for three, because I want Hakan with his seven... Uh, Hakan's just going to finish that off anyway. Oh well, that's okay. Now, I should be able to slag and burn that unit while staying pretty safe with Irsa. And like, it's pretty useful to get just in a little damage on these guys. The difference between an 810 and an 88 is, you know, pretty important given that a lot of my units have over eight armor, but it's much closer to having 10 armor. Now, Luden could hit this, but it would get in the way of Hakan. So I'm just gonna stay behind other units and be ready to go. Now the scary one comes. It's a con, but can only hit for armor damage. That's huge. Now we'll finish this one off. A con's kind of our, our smasher. He's in the gun ult roll now. Hmm. Right, if I move here, they'll probably move through coals to get to me. And I do have 12 armor, so neither of these enemies over here are very threatening to me. I'll just bring this one down to 5. Then it's very much in the unthreatening range. And this guy shouldn't be able to reach anything. Perfect. Now, I'd love to get in a hit on this guy with a con, but a con goes after him. I think I want to go here, be in the way, and bring the pain. I'll spend an extra will on it, just to get this guy down a bit, and also if I draw attacks, we're good. All right, great, that guy couldn't reach Fasolt. Hmm. It's got 18, that's such a big threat. Irsa goes next. Yursa can hit it. Yursa should be able to hit this guy. That'll bring it down to 16. If I'm at 16 armor, he's not really a threat, so I'm going to cast Malice on him. That will taunt an adjacent unit. It has to attack Fasult next turn. It's at 18 power, and it will be down to 16 by the time it attacks, so it can't hit me for strength damage. Yeah, Yursa can reach it. Where do I want her to reach it, though? Hmm. If I come up here, it blocks a con's movement. I don't want to, um... I will have to set some... I hope the coal doesn't land in the square before it, because I want Hakan to move there. And I think it's forced to, because it automatically leaves two coals if it can. Hmm. All right, that's not great. Chris took some strength damage. We could also impale it. But that leaves Luden pretty vulnerable. Huh. But that forces it onto the coal. And that pushes it over a square, which gives a con room to run up to it. I think I will impale it. That drops it to 14, because it forces it on. And it has to move, because it has to attack the salt. So we actually brought it down to 10 there. That was great. Now, Khan could actually go after this guy, but he has 19 armor, so it's not like Khan does much there. So I'll move Khan slightly closer and just smash this guy for massive damage, because Khan is a beast. Alright, Mogger keeps drawing stuff. Mogger, of course, can regenerate armor. He's the only character who can. Uh, that's great. This seems the most threatening and worth spending a bit getting it down to six. Ooh, Mogra took an armor a hit. Okay, so I think I'm going to start regenerating armor. We know we can heal three armor on a rest. Ah, 
I was hoping they went for Basalt. But again, if Luden takes some armor damage, that's okay. Gotta start weakening your armor. It sucks that Basalt has so little break. That's probably someplace I should spend a point eventually. Ooh, this is gonna be a tough war. Wars are challenging. Ooh. So, do you see the square I see? We can hit three with Slag and Burn. Yeah, I'm gonna go for that. Like, six damage not worrying about armor. Okay, that's fine. Um, do we impale this? Just take, yeah, let's take the strength damage we can do. And I'll have to take at least one more coming back. Not as good as Irsa could do, but something. And Impale just finished this guy off. That's nice. And wasted his turn. Khan could kill the 8-6. That's not so scary. We've kept a Khan full, which is great. Do we want to start going for this guy? No. They're still full. Okay. Let's just finish off this unit. Is a Khan already level 5? I forget. I think so. This is the scarier one. Yeah, let's bring them to four. It does use up all of Gris's will. Eight. Oh, I forgot this guy still had pretty good. All right, I would like to get Mogger a little out of there. I'm feeling worried about him. Oh, I can't rest now. Oh, I forgot. I thought I could rest after that and regain armor. Oh, that was a big mistake. Luckily, this guy's an idiot. And just did a bunch of strength damage. But this one's a problem. 10, 9. Can Fasolt do damage? Fasolt is 12. Hmm. I can just hit them for 2. Nope, I don't want to use Malice. Oops. I think this guy has been doing high break. But it's out of will. It's 2 break. I think I'd rather just bring this down to 7. Break. Yeah. Alright, well, Irsa can again hit for a huge slag and burn turn. And we still have a con full. That's really important to keep in mind. This guy's down to one. But he's doing a lot of break. I think Luden, we're just going to impale again. Yeah. Guaranteed two damage skipping armor is pretty good. Does mean I'm sort of just ignoring his armor entirely. Alright. Fasolt's armor is going to go down this fight. Okay. What can Akan do? That's still 17 armor. And Akan's not good at skipping armor. So I guess we're slowly circling him around. It's not really needed anywhere. I guess let's just rest and make sure he's full for the next stage. Uh, great. That thing moved a whole bunch before attacking. That'll make it much less effective. All right, Gris, what do you got for me? I'm going to reload you, and I'm going to just finish this one off. Try to get into pillage mode as quickly as we can. All right, Mogger, going to start healing up on armor. Fasult may take a bunch here, but yeah, it's going to be pretty low armor. But he still, you know, has some power. Can't kill that because he doesn't have the exert, but we'll go into a... We'll take a hit here because he has no shield. Oh, there, I forgot there were two left. Okay, so we didn't actually go into pillage mode. Can you finish this guy? You can, but you have to slag and burn. On the other hand, we could go for this guy, bring him down to three. Then he can only do a little strength damage to Fasolt. I think I saved life by doing it this way. Actually, yeah, 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 because we saved one there, and now I'm going to impale with Luden, and this is two life, so it'll kill itself on its turn coming back towards us, and that will just skip its turn, and then we'll go into pillage mode, and yeah, we'll get turns before the other guy does. That's wonderful. So we're going to do some resting. This is especially good on Mogger, who can get back up to 11. bring 
you down to one. I guess we'll just finish it here. Give you an extra point just for later. And go on to the second stage of the war. Everyone's still up, so we're, we're doing okay. Got a little hairy, but kill a few more as they flee, of course. Again, if I was in more trouble, there is a case for backing down here. But let's see what we got. We got a 1911. Really do struggle with those. We got a 1015, also a problem. So just as many, many enemies as the first round. This is not great. Okay, so notably, Gris is near this guy. So if we impale him and then push him back with Gris, we can do the impale trick. And so I think I'm going to do that. Let me give Luden a little extra here. Ah, no, he'll already move. Okay. That doesn't push me too far back. And shield damage to Gris is fine at this point. Gris kind of sucks. Uh... Hakan's still at 12.18, so Hakan can just one-shot things. Superstar. Doesn't even have to use any exert. Uh, there, is, there is a real benefit to keeping someone in reserve. Uh, okay, Gris went down. No tricks there. 10.15 or the 9.15 now. Clearly the scariest thing on the field. Do I want to weaken the 8.10 or do I want to start breaking the 19.9? Or do I just want to rest? I'm just going to rest and keep Mogger good on stats. They're going to now lose some turns to the enemies far away in the top right. 2-9. Two 2-9 nine. Two is not very useful. All right, I guess we want to... I'm going to make sure... Make it a little harder to get to Irsa. Someone's going to go down here. I mean, obviously, we already had Gris go down. Uh, getting the 15 down to 13 would be pretty nice. Yeah, that feels right to me. And we'll put it here. So hopefully it will walk over the coals that we leave getting to me. And it does an armor damage, which is quite nice. And luckily, a bunch of enemies far away gives us more turns in the area of action than they get. I'm going to come here and push this back just to get a little more bypassing armor damage on it. Because it will do one, and then it will do a second damage as it moves back. And if it moves back stupidly, we might get extra stuff. Right. Mogra's shield's still up. And Takan can just one-shot things. So Hakan's going to run around finishing things, and hopefully that's how we win this fight, is having Hakan full. So hopefully this does an extra move. Yes, wonderful. Brought itself down to three. Can't do much damage to Ursa at that point. I'm just going to keep resting with Akan. Um, if he's drawing fire and can heal his armor to 15, maybe they waste turns. Uh, it's only moved one. That's a shame. Oh, we got the dodge to go off. The 10%, I think, right? What's our equip? 10% dodge strength. Oh, coming in huge. I'm going to keep him here just because... And we're going to lower um, armor. Just because that gets in the way of the humans, right? Who are much easier to one-shot. Basalt may go down here. Tough fight if a 19 guy is going down, but... Actually, at this point... Ah, I was hoping with Puncture she could do damage, but her strength is just too low. So, what's the big threat? That's got 10. This is 12. 7, 10, or 6, 12. I guess we're scared her of 6, 12. Human abilities are useful, like the Varl obviously have better stats, but humans tend to have nice abilities that can operate around them. Could impale here. Yeah, honestly, why not? The one downside of impale is sometimes when they, I think when they kill themselves, I'm not sure you always get the, the kill for it. Right. Fasult somehow still up, <laughs> took 8 damage there. Oh, Hakan can't reach the 610. All right, so we're going to bring Hakan to where he can fight the two guys far away when they come over, but where they can't reach him. Yeah. And he'll hopefully uh, sweep them next time around. All right, did kill himself. I think uh, Luden's special is, yeah, when he gets kills, 
the, the little thing over his head is he got a bonus to will and adjacent allies did, so it is counting those kills properly. Now, Mogger is actually just higher on armor than he was a few turns ago. I think we will take the opportunity to do an attack because 10 is quite scary, but 4 is not scary. Right. This ult goes down. Okay, we knew that was coming. Now, sadly, uh, we could move, like, over here and slag and burn those two, but I think not worth it. If we don't move, we get puncture. Nice. Okay. I'm going to load her up on stuff. We can do a... Uh... Wait, can we not puncture? All right, it was glitching out there, but we should be able to puncture it down to three, which is quite nice. Puncture meaning she gets a bonus as an archer against enemies that have lost shield. Those two can't reach us yet. Wonderful. And what can you do for me? You have six? You can finish off the big one. Let's just bring it to one. Let's just bring it to one. I want it to be wasting turns while they still have these two 810s. Uh, the 810 and the 910. Because those are a problem. Now, I'm going to Sundering Impact. Not sure why, because we could just kill it by attacking. But I want to make sure it hits the bonus damage on the thing next to it. Mogger still 1411, doing great work. And actually, he should run over and hit the 8-9, right? Or just finish this guy? Let's just finish this guy. They're still losing their next turn because I kept their 4-1 alive. And then we can go into pillage mode. And they're still going for Mogger. Perfect. We'll back her out of the way so the 810 can't come kill her. Finish off this. We're in pillage. We have won another war. Two went down. Two went down. Not ideal. But somehow, Mogger, still not remotely close to going down. He's so good. Uh, well, Luden came pretty close to going down. We can we can admit this. But uh, Hakan will uh, do the honors. <laughs> And we got an item, Statue of a Sightless Man. Hopefully that's fun to use, but, uh, Mogger, so good. This item was actually turned out to be great. I thought the three armor on rest would be pretty useless, because I don't want to be resting that much in the middle of a fight, but actually Mogger just running into the middle of the battlefield and then resting there has turned out to be a pretty viable strategy, which I am very pleased by. The assault did go down, which is probably not a great sign, given that your 19 armor guy shouldn't go down that often. Let's let's go to camp so we can see what what our new our new findings are. I hope this war chapter hasn't been too repetitive of just gameplay and not story. For me, it's fun, right? Because I I enjoy the gameplay, but it might be less interesting as a viewer. Or it might be more interesting. I have no idea. Either way, Banner Saga is great, and this is, uh, as I keep saying, it's most gameplay-driven chapter. Statue of a Stightless Man. 20% dodge strength plus 2 to strength. So if we look at what Hakan currently has, it is a strict upgrade and a huge one. And bringing Hakan to 20 strength, again, this guy's just going to be hitting so hard. We can upgrade Fasult. May as well do so. Just to level 4. I think we're going to put the point into break. Both points, maybe? Huh. I'm only going to have one more level after this, so I have four more points to distribute. The question is, do I want to reach 13 power and 2 break, or 12 power and 3 break? I think I want to reach 12 power and 3 break, so I'm going to start by putting the points into break. I think that'll make him more useful running forward. Do we want to change his equip? He has one move plus 10 dodge strength versus 20 dodge strength or plus 3 will per rest. I guess 20% dodge strength might be better. He doesn't have to be very mobile. He's just one of our walls. Mogger and Fasult. Hakan runs around in the back finishing stuff off. I'm going to move Hakan up the turn order though. I think he... Uh, the more turns he gets, the better at this point, because he's now at 12.20. We finally got something that just gives a real boost to strength, and he's going to be one-shotting any minor enemy on the field. 
And if we see things like 15 tens, which are kind of scary, you can just hit them for 10 and bring them to five tens. Yeah, or, you know, whatever order. So, the Kanza house now. Probably my second best character now, pretty clearly. I'm hoping we get items that give boosts to some other characters, but right now that seems like our big two. I think Irsa, if we get the right items, could be really good. I think she's pretty... Who do you think's been better, Irsa or Luden? Because Luden's Impale is useful, right? I can combo it with the shield push thing, though I usually haven't had that set up. Uh, but I do have them slightly before Gris in the turn order, so we could put them next to each other, so he, we could try to set that combo up more regularly. And Impale is clearly useful. It does one damage and then one more damage as they return, and if they return in a stupid movement pattern, it often does a few extra damage on top while skipping armor. Irsa consistently can do one break and two, uh, two strength damage, but she has the problem. And she can do it to areas, but they haven't usually grouped up well enough. So I think Luden's probably been a little better so far. But I think I like Yersa's moveset a little more. Deep inside the woods, you get the distinct sense that Dredge have more or less surrounded you, and in great numbers. Their dark shapes create unsettling patterns as they slide between the trees in every direction. At least it's not as bad as it could have been if you hadn't taken out a good portion of them already, you think to yourself. You call Mogger around. Any ideas? Yeah, pray to whatever god you like. There's more of them waiting on the other side of the wood than we've seen so far. We may be seriously outnumbered, especially if we wait. Irsa appears unexpectedly. What if, she says, patting her arrows knowingly, you could set part of the woods on fire to draw their attention while you escape, or try to draw them into a trap? Was this your idea, you ask? She shrugs innocently. You consider your options. I do not like the idea of setting a forest on fire that I am currently in. So my instinct is one or five here. And you know what? I love fighting. One it is. <laughs> With the warriors ready, you burst from the woods at full tilt, weapons and shield at the ready, battle cries on the wind. The dredge may have known you were coming, but still found themselves surprised. As you cut one wide-eyed slag nearly in half, you bark orders and engage. We got another war. Ooh, we have them way outnumbered. Charge. We have basically recruited or picked up allies at every opportunity. I don't think you're guaranteed to always have the numbers advantage in war in these chapters. And I, I do think there are wars in later chapters and those there will certainly be times when we don't have the number advantage. This is our sixth war of the chapter, geez. Alright, Fasult is injured, but strength is not his key stat, and I upped his break, so he has something useful to do with low strength. Gris is also injured, that makes him a 12-9. That's not much better than Bersi's 9-12, but I think we'll stick with the party we have. Maybe we'll upgrade Gris at some point. I could level him up now, but it's not like the ex items are that exciting, and his stats are down anyway. And as I've said with Luden and Irsa, I think, like... You know, their abilities can level up a bit from leveling up, and that might be worth leveling up, but their stats aren't that important to what they're doing. I, I, if I was running out of will with them, I would say maybe up their will. But right, if I'm slag and burning and impaling, then their strength stat doesn't really matter, their break stat isn't relevant. Um, I guess slag and burn does break damage plus the two damage. Is that right? I think that's right. If we look at Irsa here. Trap an area, laying down coals, which do one damage. Yeah, not clear. Okay, what do we got? We got a 1611, a 910. Again, this is a war, so remember, I'm going to try to stay full for the next part. All right, so we're going to try to take out these two at the bottom, and then we're going to hopefully be ready for those at the top. So I'm going to put Mogger close, and then Hakan next closest, so that Hakan can hit hard after. We put him third in the move order. Hopefully he can take out the weaker one. Uh, let's move these far away, not because I intend to have them there, but because I can't move the squares which are already occupied. Uh, I just don't want anyone to be reachable first turn by the enemy. Mm -hmm. 
1611, that's not a threat to Hakan. Okay, so I'm going to put Fasult somewhere over here. The humans over here. Mogger can be in the way, so nothing can get at them. And where are we dropping Gris? I guess here, and we'll have him try to sprint back. We're going to try to get everyone to the bottom and then fight out from there. Ah, uh, you have first turn. Okay, so we're definitely going to have to block your path to our humans. And I'll just do break damage. I'm not scared. Yeah, he can't hurt me. And now we're going to run back with Assault, but maybe try not to move somewhere anyone can reach us. Where would that be? Maybe here? Yeah, let's go here. I forgot I could zoom in and out, actually. So hopefully this guy can't do anything this turn. Perfect. Khan can get a hit. We lowered this guy's armor. Yeah, he's at 11-11. <laughs> and Hakan can just hit for 9. Yeah, we'll bring him down to 2. Don't need to finish him off. He can waste turns later. Or they can waste turns. Um... Okay, this is a little tempting that they're close together. We could drop a slag and burn between them. This might be a little optimistic, but uh, I should have checked if they could reach me. But that's okay. All right. Received a message, but we can ignore that for now. Um, are they actually threatening to hit your set? Yeah, they are. All oh, right, I probably shouldn't have gone there. This kind of gets in Mogger's way. Ah, I screwed up. Alright, I'm just going to pull Ludin back and we'll figure out what to do with him next turn. Hopefully this goes for Mogger. Perfect. Mogger's just going to heal the shield damage in a minute anyway. Alright, let's get Gris somewhere near the action. Not going to be useful this fight. Started him too far away. All right, Mogger's taking some real shield damage, so maybe I just restore? Yeah. I'll just rest, get back to 13. But I screwed up with Irsa here, and she's probably going to get killed, because that's yeah, a problem. want to leave the 10-2 alive, so I'm going to move Fasult closer to the other units and hopefully draw their ire. Hopefully this walks over Coles. No, it's going for Irsa. All right, all right. We didn't do this perfectly. Okay, but Hakan can just start one-shotting the 8-8s. Don't want to kill the 10-2, because it is 2. Hopefully that guy still can't reach anyone. Sweet. And where does Irsa belong? Ooh, if Irsa hits this square over here... I think I have to use one extra exert to get there. Yeah, but we can hit this square. Oh, that kills this guy. I don't actually want to kill this guy. That was dumb. I will slag and burn here, though, <laughs> just to pick two damage on this. Not not as good a move as I thought, because I forgot I want to keep things alive. That lowers this a little. That okay, guy's big break. Mogger might not stay up that well. Okay. What can Luden do usefully? Luden can impale. Luden can always impale. He and Gris are not close together, so we can't pull off a combo here. Ooh, impale did two damage. Because it does my normal attack damage, and for once, Luden was on full. Alright. Ah, uh, that did annoying break damage to Akan. Ah, <laughs> oh, Gris, you're so far away. Just can't be useful. We really don't want anything to hit Akan here. Don't go for... Alright, well, that's fine. Because you almost killed yourself. Right. But Hakan is a bit low. I'm going to rest again with Mogger. Try to get his armor back up. If I move, the rest doesn't work. Now what I'm worried about is he'll hit a con. Oh no. Oh yes! The 20% came good! Oh my god, what a... What a heroic moment. Now, a con will get a turn before the 10-11 does again. So I'm actually going to go elsewhere. I'd like to hit the 7-8. That guy's a turn soon. Okay, I'm actually going to finish this. If I can. 90%. Get the kill. I want the kill on Fasult, and 
I think we can make it to next turn okay. And I know Hakan can take out this. Do we bring it to one? I bring it to one. I don't want their 7-7 their seven, seven or whatever getting a turn soon. So I'm going to leave this alive a turn longer than I would otherwise. Also, we don't really want kills on Akan. He's already level 5. Alright. Yursa can slag and burn here. Give Yursa a kill. And bring the, uh, the dredge down to 4. We could spend two exert and then two more exert to kill this. I actually think I will. I think I will. Because I don't want to take more shield damage over here. And in the pillage we can, okay, that's okay. Still at 20. No real point in resting you, but I also don't, I want to make sure I rest Mogger for the shield bonus. Uh, Salt can get the kill. Sure. And War Part 2. Sixth War. Everyone we've done the extra fight, we will of course do it again. And we get a bonus to willpower, which is nice. Let's see what we got. Got one big. That's it? Oh. Well, we can deal with this. Are we already in pillage? Yeah, we're already in pillage. Uh, you have big armor breaking. Uh, actually, at this point, I should use all my will to get close, right? Because I just need to take out one more enemy, so I want to make sure everything goes right. Uh, you're not threatening to kill me or anything, so we're going to spend all our points on breaking your armor. This was kind of the war that went best so far, right? You can only use one extra move with Mogger, because he only has one point of exert. It's his one stat that isn't fantastic. All right, we can't quite reach it, so I may as well not spend the exertion. Oh, that's a shame. He can't reach it either. All right, we should keep him out of range, just in case something goes weird, because he only has the five armor now, and next turn he can approach and destroy. And actually, I'd, I'd normally be slagging and burning here, but I think we just attack because we just won't need to do armor damage. All right, I did not position Luden well. I'll circle around. More shield damage. I don't actually want Hakan to get the kill, though. I've kind of weakened him too much. <laughs> Funny issue to have. But he's still at 11. He doesn't actually threaten to kill anything. So I'm going to lock him in with it in with Hakan and finish off his armor for someone else to kill. Because this is the last part of the fight. He'll weaken someone, but it's okay. Ooh, and she gets the massive... Um, do I want her to get the kill? Sure, why not? She gets the massive... Uh, Penetrate bonus, or whatever the archer move is called, and can do the full 11 damage, despite only having 2 strength. Sphalin Dust. Hopefully a good item. And we have won our 6th war. I'm going to be going, I think, another 10 minutes or so on this. But I guess we should maybe wrap up. So this was this was a purely combat episode. I, I, yeah, I'm repeating myself. I find the combat really interesting, and I hope you do too. I just, I like decision making. I think the turn order here and the interplay of shield and armor works really well. Let's make camp. We'll do whatever one more kind of event of the game is. And then stop. Long chapter, chapter three. I think it's the clear longest in the game, but I don't really remember. Other chapters that are kind of long have a more clear, this is an exact timeline of it, of events happening in the plot. Okay, we found our new item. We can now scroll in our item collection. 
is Fallon Dust plus two armor. I like the sound of that. Uh, I think we're going to put that on Fasolt. Get him up to 21 armor. Yeah, that sounds lovely. A couple injuries, but nothing too too heartbreaking here. It's not like Fasolt is based on strength. And I'm really pleased I upgraded his break. So he could be more generally useful. He's no Mogger, but he's our, he's our Mogger backup. Uh, I was genuinely scared that Mogger killed when, died when the transformed into a bird thing happened. That would be really rough. I, I think all these wars without Mogger, I would just be losing. <laughs> just like straight up losing. I mean, I, I, I'd win the first leg and then I'd retreat because the nightmare. I think we can see the place we're going. Raven something in the distance. The tower there. Uh, oh, God. I hate how um, the morale always declines, right? I was trying to move up. You can't see my cursor. But I was trying to move up to select rest when I saw morale go down to good. Because I wanted to get it back up to great before the sequence. Because with the camera stopped, it was clear, you know, a sequence was coming. And now we can't make camp. Can't make camp. Uh. I think this is this is definitely the end sequence of the chapter. Six wars this chapter. We did an extra fight in all six. I think it was six. Maybe I can't count. Then we should have more items, shouldn't we? We have six items, though. So I think we got them all through wars. Because I don't think I got one at the Godstone. Because I said, keep it to return it. Which got me renowned, but didn't let me keep the item. So we got, I think all six items came from Winning Wars. Because I didn't buy any at the market, and I don't think we got any through other things happening, and we didn't get one at the Godstone. Well, you can see why this place is not lived in, I guess. But not why it was abandoned, just that it took damage and is broken down. Obviously, rebuilding places is possible. Uh, I do think I should stop here before getting into the coming scenes here. But hopefully we still have a place in the story. We have a sense, you know, we came here because there's some mystery. Why are the dredge coming from here rather than coming from the north or the farther north where they're supposed to be coming from? And I think that's really the question going. Also, like, why did the sun stop? Though I think most of the game sort of functions on vibes rather than explicit plot, but the explicit plot is actually quite interesting, so. What is this mess about? Looks like a full-scale battle happened, and recently. But only dredge bodies remain. Maybe we'll see something from the tower. Have Varl search the buildings and make sure there's no dredge waiting to spring on us. On it. And don't set up camp or make a fire. We'll take a look and then get out of here before anything goes wrong. Good call. This does not seem like a safe place. You mean, more wrong. Thanks, Luton. Always helpful. Now, my first playthrough, I had um, knocked Luton out and sent him to Grafheim with Fasolt. So neither Luton nor Fasolt were in my party. I think that means Irsa and Bersi left. So I had a very different team. All right, we can look at our heroes and we can move up the tower. We can't rest here. There's no rest option. I missed my chance for that. Uh, so I think we'll quit here. And next time we will finally finish the war chapter, chapter 3.